A glass of red wine can add a touch of romance to your dinner. A bottle of beer might be your perfect relaxant after work. And a sophisticated cocktail offers a myriad of delightful taste adventures. However, while our taste buds and spirits relish the joys of alcohol, our bodies embark on an adventure of their own. Why are so many people tempted by alcohol? What effects does it have on us? How should we view alcoholic beverages? Welcome to PAP Tips, where today we delve into this ancient and controversial topic, alcohol. Don't worry, we're not here to make you quit drinking or to turn this into a health lecture. We just want to explore what happens to your body when you raise that glass of mysterious liquid. In the first 30 minutes of drinking, it all starts when alcohol enters the mouth. In terms of taste and smell, alcohol isn't really our favorite. Higher alcohol content can feel so spicy it's hard to swallow, even a whiff can be quite pungent. At this point, it might take some endurance to gulp down this fiery liquid. And then you'll feel a warm sensation tracing the path of the alcohol through your esophagus to your stomach. In fact, the body starts absorbing alcohol right from the mouth. Specifically, a small amount is absorbed through the mouth and esophagus, with the main absorption happening in the stomach. Alcohol doesn't need to be digested like food to be absorbed. It passes directly through the stomach lining into the bloodstream. If you have oral ulcers, esophageal or stomach wall damage, alcohol can irritate these areas, causing pain. If you feel significant discomfort, don't tough it out. Stop drinking immediately and seek medical help. Alcohol can damage the surface cells of the stomach lining, breaking down its protective layer and making it more susceptible to stomach acid corrosion, leading to inflammation, ulcers, and even bleeding. Since these bleedings occur inside the stomach, they're hard to detect and can lead to more significant risks from excessive blood loss. Under normal circumstances, your body doesn't react significantly to alcohol at this stage. If you're a regular drinker, you might feel relaxed, slightly excited, and happy. But this is more due to psychological anticipation than the physiological effects of alcohol. 30 minutes to 2 hours. The alcohol not absorbed by the stomach enters the small intestine, which has numerous villi increasing the absorption area, allowing alcohol to be quickly and efficiently absorbed into the bloodstream. Compared to the stomach, absorption in the small intestine is more efficient, so most alcohol is absorbed here, rapidly increasing blood alcohol levels. As alcohol circulates through the body, its lipid-soluble nature allows it to easily cross cell membranes, affecting almost all types of cells and tissues. At this point, several organs in the body, especially the brain, feel the effects of alcohol. Alcohol affects the brain in multiple ways, and these effects intensify as blood alcohol levels rise. Initially, lower concentrations of alcohol might make you feel relaxed and happy. Due to the inhibition of parts of the brain responsible for control and restraint and an increase in dopamine release, creating a sense of reward and satisfaction. As alcohol levels rise, more areas of the brain are affected, leading to a significant decline in cognitive functions, judgment, and reaction ability. People may experience difficulty in speaking, poor coordination, and instability in their gait. If you continue to drink, higher concentrations of alcohol will affect deeper regions of the brain, particularly those controlling emotions and behavior. This can lead to mood swings, loss of control, and even increased aggression. Losing rationality and physical control, some may consume more alcohol. And in extreme cases, high concentrations of alcohol can even inhibit areas of the brain that regulate basic life functions, like breathing and heart rate regulation, posing serious health risks. For those who drink excessively over a long period, their brains are continually immersed in high concentration alcohol blood. This can lead to permanent changes in brain structure and function, such as memory decline, reduced learning ability, and impaired decision making. These are due to a series of irreversible damages caused by alcohol to the brain's neurotransmitter system, including neuronal damage and brain shrinkage. To reduce blood alcohol concentration, the liver works at full capacity. The liver breaks down alcohol into harmless substances through a series of biochemical processes. First, when alcohol reaches the liver through the bloodstream, it encounters alcohol dehydrogenase, ADH, a widely present enzyme in liver cells. ADH oxidizes alcohol, ethanol, to acetaldehyde, a toxic intermediate that is harmful to the body. Then, acetaldehyde is quickly converted to acetic acid by another enzyme, aldehyde dehydrogenase, ALDH. Acetic acid, a relatively harmless substance. 
is further converted into water and carbon dioxide, eventually excreted through urine and respiration. It's worth noting that the liver's alcohol metabolism rate is limited. Averaging about 10 milliliters of pure alcohol per hour, roughly the alcohol content of one beer. This metabolic rate varies based on individual differences, genetic factors, gender, weight, drinking habits, and liver health status. This explains why some people can drink a lot, while others get drunk on just one drink. When alcohol intake exceeds the liver's metabolic capacity, blood alcohol concentration increases, leading to symptoms of intoxication. Long-term excessive drinking can lead to liver damage, such as fatty liver, alcoholic hepatitis, and even cirrhosis, further affecting liver metabolic functions. Several hours to a day after drinking. If alcohol intake significantly exceeds the liver's metabolic rate, blood alcohol levels remain relatively high for several hours. During this stage, alcohol continues to affect various organs. Drinkers may experience hangovers, typically including headaches, dry mouth, general weakness, nausea, stomach discomfort, dizziness, and dehydration. Alcohol also affects sleep quality, so even after rest, you may still feel tired. In the hours to a day after stopping drinking, the liver continues to metabolize alcohol in the body, gradually reducing blood alcohol concentration and lessening hangover symptoms. The previously suppressed nervous system begins to resume normal function, and the brain gradually regains control over thinking, memory, judgment, and coordination. Cognitive functions dulled by alcohol start to become clearer. During this stage, your attention and reaction speed also gradually improve, making you feel more sober. By this point, you've essentially returned to your pre-drinking state. Interestingly, many people experience a physiological condition response to alcohol when they first wake up from a hangover. Just the smell of alcohol, even seeing bottles and glasses, can cause discomfort. This is because the brain might have already associated these negative experiences, such as nausea, headaches, dizziness, with alcohol. This phenomenon is a common psychological and physiological reaction, a natural response of the brain trying to avoid repeating past negative experiences. Over time, this reaction usually weakens. This is the magical journey of alcohol in the body. From this process, it's clear that your body is busier than usual when you're asleep or forgetful after drinking. Excessive alcohol can cause significant damage to the digestive system, nervous system, liver, and other organs, some of which are irreversible. Therefore, the importance of moderate drinking should not be overlooked. About moderate drinking, PAP Tips gives you 5 tips. Tip 1 Know Your Limits As we just mentioned, everyone has different capacities for metabolizing alcohol, mainly determined by genetics. So, before drinking, clearly understand your body's ability to metabolize alcohol and set an upper limit for your alcohol intake. For example, throughout the evening, you should only slowly drink two bottles of beer or one glass of whiskey. Exceeding the liver's capacity to metabolize alcohol will lead to high blood alcohol levels, causing drunkenness and bodily harm. Tip 2 Don't drink on an empty stomach. Drinking on an empty stomach leads to faster absorption of alcohol, rapidly increasing blood alcohol concentration, and quick intoxication. In addition, drinking on an empty stomach affects blood sugar levels. Alcohol can hinder the normal blood sugar regulation process, causing blood sugar levels to drop, leading to dizziness, headaches, or weakness. To mitigate these negative effects, it's advisable to eat some food before drinking. Food can slow down alcohol absorption, reduce direct irritation to the stomach lining, and help maintain stable blood sugar levels. Foods rich in protein and fat are particularly effective because they take longer to digest, thus delaying alcohol entering the bloodstream. So, eating before drinking not only enhances the pleasure of drinking but also protects your health. Tip 3. Avoid excessive drinking in a short period. Sometimes, people like to chug their drinks to express their excitement. Intaking large amounts of alcohol in a short period leads to a rapid increase in blood alcohol concentration. Since the liver cannot process alcohol as fast as it's consumed, the body quickly enters a state of intoxication. Short-term excessive drinking can cause alcohol poisoning, symptoms include vomiting, seizures, loss of consciousness, and even death. To avoid these risks, slow down your drinking pace, allowing your body time to react. Sip your drink and enjoy the taste, rather than aiming for rapid intoxication. 
Drinking water in between alcoholic drinks can help reduce total alcohol intake and lessen its impact on the body. Tip 4. Avoid alcohol dependence. Stress, anxiety, depression, and other psychological issues may lead some people to use alcohol to cope. Over time, this can lead to alcohol dependence. Alcohol dependence, also known as alcohol use disorder, is a chronic disease characterized by a strong craving for alcohol, loss of control over drinking, continued drinking despite negative consequences, and withdrawal symptoms once alcohol intake stops. If you find yourself frequently drinking or unable to control your drinking, this may be an early sign of developing alcohol dependence. The key to avoiding alcohol dependence is to address psychological health issues that may lead to alcohol abuse. Establish healthy stress coping methods, and reduce the tendency to use alcohol to deal with emotional issues. Participating in sports activities. Developing hobbies, learning relaxation techniques. Maintaining an active social life, and associating with non-heavy drinkers can be helpful. Additionally, seeking professional mental health support for psychological health issues, such as anxiety or depression, that may lead to alcohol abuse is crucial. Tip 5. Don't force yourself to drink. Many people complain that they don't like drinking but feel obliged to do so due to invitations and social etiquette. Since alcohol has an inhibitory effect on the brain, it can lead to unintentional consumption of more alcohol, resulting in intoxication. You can clearly express your drinking preferences and limits to others. In most cases, people will respect your choices. If you find it hard to decline, prepare some polite ways to refuse in advance such as explaining that you need to drive home or wake up early for work the next day. Remember, maintaining your boundaries is important, and don't let external pressure sway your decisions. Stay confident and firm in social situations, making your health a priority. Finally, remember, underage drinking is prohibited. That's all for this video. If you like our video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Feel free to leave us a comment. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video.